Chapter 5 The Bunkhouse Clue When Mr. Strong heard his foreman's news of the stolen horses, he became red with anger. So Hopley and Simpson are horse thieves, and maybe something worse, he cried bitterly. To think that I was taken in by their loco story. Louise and Jean agreed that the two men were suave talkers. The girls, too, had thought Hopley and Simpson were telling the truth, but evidently the men had concocted the whole yarn just to steal the horses. They probably never even saw the train, Louise figured. Juan DeZito's face was dark with rage. The Diablos, he shouted. Where those men go? Why? Mr. Strong did not reply. Instead, the rancher declared he would notify the sheriff by telephone of the theft. Unless those two crooks hole up somewhere for a long time, I'm sure the sheriff or his deputies will find them pronto, especially if they don't know this territory well. They didn't talk like Westerners. Don't you think we should try hunting for them too? Louise suggested. The rancher smiled at the eager girl. It might be dangerous, he said. And anyway, I couldn't go right away. I'm afraid I'll have to leave the investigating and capture to the sheriff. Juan DeZito, as well as the Dana girls, felt thwarted. All of them wanted to ride out at once and follow the prince left by the stolen horses. Reluctantly, the three turned away. Juan to attend to his ranch duties and the girls to go into the house and assist with breakfast. Aunt Harriet and Mrs. Strong were amazed and greatly disturbed to hear about Hopley and Simpson. The rancher's wife remarked, I've always said, when you break bread with a stranger, watch your pocketbook. The Danas laughed, but admitted that they had indeed learned a lesson on caution from Hopley and Simpson. Jean had a sudden thought. Maybe, she said. Those men mean to try finding Baron themselves. They know he's valuable and could be sold for a good price. Oh, please don't say such things, Miss Dana pleaded. The situation is bad enough without adding that possibility. An hour later, three sheriff's deputies rode in. One of them explained that they had been nearby and the sheriff had contacted them by radio. The men were shown where the tracks of the stolen horses started. The posse set off at once and soon was out of sight. The Danas and Strongs watched them go, hoping their mission would be successful. The thought of the men's adventure made the sisters restless. They longed to do something more exciting than just helping to feed the ranch animals. I have an idea, Louise exclaimed. Jean, why don't you and I look around here for clues to the thieves? It's possible they weren't using their right names. They might even be suspects wanted by the authorities. That's a great idea, Jean agreed. Where shall we start? How about in the living room, then out in the direction from which the men came? After that, let's try the bunkhouse, Louise suggested. The two young sleuths began their hunt. They came across nothing in the main room of the ranch house or on the grounds some distance from it. Seeing Mr. Strong at the corral, the sisters went to talk to him. They explained their plan and asked if he would go with them to the bunkhouse. Certainly, he replied. Anything to help find those crooks. He led the way to the bunkhouse and called in, Anybody here? When there was no answer, Mr. Strong asked the girls, Will you please wait a minute while I go inside? With a grin, he explained, My sheep herders don't always tidy up the place to make it fit for visitors. In a few moments, the rancher returned. All clear, he announced, motioning the girls to enter. The sisters looked at each other in amusement. The place was immaculate, and surely Mr. Strong had not had time to do much straightening up himself. They imagined Juan DeZito was a strict boss and a good housekeeper. Which bunks did Hopley and Simpson use? Louise asked. Mr. Strong pointed them out, and Louise began to check around one. Jean took the other. Presently, she called out, 
Here's a tool under Hopley's bunk. Does this belong to the ranch? Mr. Strong walked over and took the battered implement from her. Why, this is a tool for chipping stone, he said. It's damaged and doesn't belong to the ranch. Then it must belong to one of the horse thieves, Jean cried exultantly. Probably Ben Hopley, since it was under his bunk. Louise had been thinking fast. Her mind immediately recalled the newly made petroglyph the girls had noticed in the cave and the piece of tool they had found there. Seeing the excited look on her sister's face, Jean said, I know what you're thinking, Louise, that Ben Hopley might have chipped out that picture of the witch with the man behind her holding the shovel and ready to strike. That's right, Louise admitted. Maybe Hopley and Simpson are the ones who intend to harm the witch. Mr. Strong was intrigued with the girl's reasoning. Do you suppose those men know the secret of Lost Lake? He asked, and pretended to be surprised at the witch story. But what is the secret? Jean asked. That's a good question, the rancher replied. Personally, I've always thought that the witch must be staying there for some other reason than just digging up enough artifacts to buy food, clothing, and a new horse now and then. You mean she's digging for something really valuable? And Hopley and Simpson know this? Louise asked worriedly. That's my guess, the rancher answered. The Danas wished they might set out at once for Lost Lake. Now they had three incentives to find Baron, to warn the witch, and possibly to locate the thieves and retrieve the stolen horses. But they had to be content to wait until the following day when the rancher could accompany them. We should start at sunrise, said Mr. Strong, and pack some warm clothes, the rancher added. Old codgers around here forecast an open winter, but you never know. The girls were up before dawn. They dressed quickly and were astride their mounts when the rancher was ready to leave. This time the trio was taking a pack horse to carry their food, sleeping bags and extra sweaters. The sheriff had phoned, reporting the posse had had no success. Aunt Harriet wished the searchers luck, and the three set off at a good clip. Presently, they left the flat land behind. Mr. Strong chose a trail which finally led through various canyons. The Danas were intrigued by the fantastic rock formations with their riot of color. Overhanging cliffs looked like birds' heads, and the rock walls of pinkish red, tan, brown, blue, and purple made an unbelievable and beautiful picture. Mr. Strong rested the horses every few miles. At 10 o'clock, he called a longer halt. I don't know about you girls, he said, grinning, but I'm starved. Jean said as she dismounted, one of those great big ham and cheese and tomato sandwiches would sure taste good to me. After the sandwiches, there were oranges and homemade cookies. When the trio finished eating, Louise took out a camera from her saddlebag, and after she and Jean had snapped a few pictures, the rider set off once more. The horses walked slowly now. The going through the next canyon was very rough, and a stiff wind had come up. In a short while, snow began to fall. Mr. Strong suggested that they stop in a cave a short distance ahead. By the time they reached it, the girls were glad to take advantage of the shelter. The snow was being whipped about by the high wind, and the sisters' faces stung. This is just a squall, Mr. Strong assured them. The horses were taken inside the cave, which was a large one, and according to Mr. Strong, had been used as a home by Indians long ago. There were no petroglyphs or pictographs on the walls which were black, probably from the smoke of cooking fires. How long do you think this snowstorm will last? Louise asked Mr. Strong as she peered out at what looked like a white hurricane. Oh, half an hour, perhaps, he answered and showed no alarm. This won't snow us in. The travelers sat down on the earthen floor. Idly, the Danas began to poke their fingers into the dry earth. 
Wouldn't it be fun to find an artifact? Louise remarked. There ought to be some old things buried here, said Mr. Strong. I have a small trowel in my saddlebag. I'll get it and you can try your luck. He went for the tool and handed it to Jean, who began digging furiously. She found nothing. But Louise, who had been kicking up the dirt with the heel of her boot a little distance away, said, Here's an arrowhead. She showed the ancient object to the others, then put it into her pocket. Jean had continued digging. Suddenly she cried out excitedly, I found something big! It looks as if it might be valuable! End of chapter 5